Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 1st, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We got an important patch for PHP. This affects the 7.4 as well as the 8.0 and 8.1 branch of PHP. And the single vulnerability that's being patched here has a CVSS score of 8.2 and potentially would allow remote code execution. It's a use after free vulnerability typically exploitable, but tend to be a little bit more tricky to exploit. No exploit available yet. Uh, what's a little bit embarrassing here, it's in the filter validate float function. These filter functions, well, they are sort of meant to be security features in terms of allowing you to validate, uh, in this case, uh, float numbers. If the minimum and maximum uh, limit is being used with this function and uh, the check fails, it could lead to this use after free uh, vulnerability and uh, with that either uh, to a crash of PHP or again potentially a remote code execution. Certainly something that you do want to get patched uh, on your systems you're running PHP. It's probably not really worth the effort to check if you're using the filter validate float function. Uh, the use of that function should be quite common in PHP projects. I think with patches, we got a patch for Mozilla VPN. Actually, I think it was released last week, so sorry for being a little bit late with this, but it's a privilege escalation vulnerability. Mozilla VPN uses the OpenSSL library in order to implement some of its crypto functions and the OpenSSL path is uh, uncontrolled. So an attacker uh, could essentially load whatever library they would like instead of OpenSSL. SSL. And with that, uh, since the VPN runs with system privileges, the attacker can gain system privileges on a Windows system. And one of the probably most common implementations of CAPTCHAs to keep bots out of websites is Google's reCAPTCHA. And of course, reCAPTCHA has gone through a number of iterations and also attackers have really sort of zoomed in on it with, in my opinion, one of the more ingenious kind of attacks against reCAPTCHA happened a few years back, uh, 2017, when a researcher figured out that they can download the audio file instead of solving the image challenge and feeding the audio file to Google's own audio recognition service in order to break the CAPTCHA. So basically have Google hack itself. Well, this was believed to be fixed, but according to the author of the original post discovering this, it has come back and updated version of their script uh, now yet again succeeds in solving reCAPTCHA with very high probability. I think they say something like 98% uh, by feeding it to Google's own audio recognition service. Lesson here, CAPTCHAs are typically only successful in slowing down an attacker and blocking some of the less targeted attacks. In some cases, I actually find that with CAPTCHAs, it's one of the few cases where you may be better off with a worse custom solution than using some of the standard solutions just because an attacker may not bother to create a script to bypass your custom solution. And researchers from Tel Aviv University found two vulnerabilities in Samsung's implementation of the trusted execution environments. In Android, this is your secure enclave that's being used to store key material. And that key material is then typically used uh, to encrypt things like, for example, saved passwords. The problems that were discovered here are around the reuse of the initialization vector, uh, pretty straightforward and common vulnerabilities in these kind of systems. Uh, the first one allows the straight reuse uh, if you're using a privileged uh, process. The second one allows sort of a downgrade attack that then leads to uh, 
initialization vector uh, reuse. The end effect is that, well, this secure enclave isn't as secure as it could be in particular if you're considering, for example, that it's being used for storing credentials like, uh, for example, for FIDO2's web or then, which is becoming somewhat more popular. The vulnerability was disclosed last year in July and has since been patched by Samsung. So make sure that your phone is up to date. And we got a quick diary by Didier about duplicate IP addresses in uh, T-Shark. This is something that uh, confuses a lot of beginners who are starting to use T-Shark. If you're seeing two IP addresses, for example, for the source IP, so not a destination and a source IP, but you're actually seeing two source IP addresses or two destination IP addresses. This is very typical for ICMP error packets where one IP address is the IP header of the actual ICMP packet and ICMP errors also include the IP header of the packet that caused the error and that IP address is also included in the output. And then quickly, a question that came in from a listener who observed that some host names resolved to the loopback IP address, so 127.0.0.1. Uh, this is actually not that terribly uncommon, often done, for example, by block lists who still want to re resolve a particular IP address in order uh, to prevent some performance issues with the resolution timing out, but they also don't want the host to connect anywhere. So uh, they just return 127.0.0.1, like I said, used in block lists, sometimes also used for inactive uh, host names. Well, and that's it for today. Uh, thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.